and welcome to another episode of Building the EMG 6. In this episode, we're going to specifically concentrate on using the PDF files and the tube templates in order to be able to mark and cut your tubes for the fuselage frame very accurately. So let's just look at the PDF file to start with. And we've got a couple of things that we want to talk about. Down in the title block we have the nomenclature or the name of the part that we're dealing with along with the drawing number. And that drawing number will correspond directly with the part number for the tube that you're going to be working with. Um, we also see down here that we have a scale of one to one. That means that this section of the actual template itself is 100% scale. And when you print it on your home printer, you're going to want to verify that you're printing at exactly 100% scale. And there are dimensions on each one of the templates so that you can actually take that dimension with a caliper from point to point, and that should come out with the dimensions that are on each template. Once you've done this a couple of times and you've verified that your printer is printing accurately, you won't have to worry about that anymore. But um, the first couple times you're going to want to make sure that your printer is set up properly to print at 100% scale. If you don't do that, it's going to throw off the dimensions for all the tubes and you're basically going to have to redo a bunch of parts. Okay, now a couple things here. Right up here we have in note number two the dimensions for the tube that you're going to be using. So in this case, this template is going to be used on a piece of half inch chromoly steel that's got 0.035 inch wall thickness and the total length of that tube that we're going to cut to length before we wrap the template around is going to be 18.629. Now those are really tight dimensions. You just have to make sure that that's the minimum dimension that you're going to get. So even if you cut it to 18.63 you're going to be in great shape. And then down in the left hand corner down here we've got the in context drawing shows where those tubes are located in relationship to the rest of the frame. So once you've looked at that, then we should really go and print this. And when we bring up our print dialog box, we're going to pick the printer that we're going to be working with, the number of copies that we want, usually going to be one or two, and then make sure that it's set at 100% scale. Um, if it's not 100% scale or if you push it to shrink to fit the paper, it's going to throw all those dimensions off. Now right now it's showing this in portrait, but all of these drawings are all set up in landscape. So you can click on landscape and then just go ahead and print that. And we'll take that template and we can use it to actually cut it out and mark the tubes with. So our next step here is we're going to head out to the shop and we're going to take these uh, templates that we've just printed and we'll cut some tube. So cutting the templates is a fairly simple process. All we have to do is bring our PDF files out to the workbench that we've printed earlier. And we'll take an X-Acto knife and a straight edge. We like to use a translucent straight edge. And then we'll trim off the excess material from the template itself using the X-Acto knife. Now in this case here, you're noticing that I'm going to cut a little extra material. And I'll show you a little bit more detail why we're going to do that. But when we're doing these small diameter tubes like this one, which is only a half inch in diameter, it's a little bit hard to work with those templates on a real small scale like that. So leaving a little extra material is going to give us something to tape the other side of the template to, making it a little bit easier for us to manage. And also, this is a template where it's shorter than the overall length of the tube, so we're going to slide the template from one side to the other end of the tube, and that's going to make it a little bit easier for us. So we've found our piece of tubing. We've dimensionally checked to make sure that it's 0.035 inch wall thickness. We've measured the length to the exact length that we were asking for on this template, which was 18.629. And now we're going to lay out the template on the top. So the first step is we need to make a mark along the uh, length of the tube so that we can keep our template uh, parallel during the, the marking process. So we're going to use our trick using a channel to hold that parallel during this marking and we'll just run a magic marker right on down along the side. 
And now we've got a, a mark that's the entire length of the tube and it's perfectly parallel. So the next step that we're going to do here is we're going to fold the template parallel with the marks that are on the template. And we'll fold it about into thirds. And the only purpose for this is so that we can take and overlap that one edge right up with the other edge of that template, leaving that little portion of the extra material on the inside of the tube. And then we're aligning the alignment marks that you can see right there. That'll keep the template from becoming askew. And then we'll just temp we'll tape the rest of the length of the tube down the entire length. And that'll form a little tube that we can then open up. And once it's opened up, because of that little extra chunk of material in there, we can simply slide that right over the end of the tube and then we'll pull the template down all the way to the end and then the first step is to rotate the template until the alignment mark lines up with the uh, alignment mark that we have on the tube and then slide the template right to the very end of the tube making sure that both sides are parallel and aligned with that mark that we made on the tube and then of course the next step is to simply take our magic marker and mark all of the locations where, where the tube is going to be cut out and we'll color it in so it holds its uh, color while we're working with it. Once we've got that colored in we'll make sure that we've got each one of the sections um, covered. Then we can go ahead and just slide the tube to the other end of the tube once again making sure that that alignment mark stays aligned with the end of that tube. So in this way it doesn't matter really what the length of the tube is we can use A size drawing PDF files printed off of your home computer and we don't have to print really long templates that way. It's a very very accurate way to go about doing this. Then all we have to do is slide off the template and we've got our marks now on either end and we're ready to trim those and cut those on the ground. So the next step here is to grind away the excess material on the end of the tube so that the um, tubes fit together correctly. In this case we're using a small porter cable uh, grinder. Works really really well. What we'll do is we'll simply grind away whatever excess material is there. We can do that a little bit at a time and if you're working on a large surface like what we're doing here you won't need to even cool the thing down. But any time that you start working into the big areas where you're grinding a lot of material it'll overheat enough that it'll burn away your magic marker lines. And as a result you'll need to dip it in water every once in a while just to cool the ends down. And once you do that kind of keep an eye on the tube. As you grind, if you're grinding lightly you don't have to dip it very often but once you start to grind into those heavy areas it'll build up a lot of heat. Watch the water bubbles that are on the tube and when it gets too hot it'll actually boil those away. That means it's time to stop, re-dip the tube and cool it back down again before you can continue grinding. This is a really simple process and with a little bit of practice you can see that we've set the the shoe far enough away from the tool that we can get in and do some pretty deep grooves in there. That allows us to not have to do a lot of hand touch-up work after the fact. We'll finish up the other end real quick. These go really quick without even having to cool the tube down because there's so little metal to grind in on a such large surface area. The last step is to simply deburr the ends of the tube where we've had all the grinding marks. The wire wheel on the other end of the grinder is a really effective tool for taking care of this little problem. It's going to leave us with a tube that's clean and ready to weld, um, making for a very simple process. So we've shown you from, step, from start to finish the process that's used on every one of the tubes in the entire fuselage frame 
And once you get this dialed in, you'll find that this goes really quickly.